Hey guys, Starship here. Uh, I wanted to make a video about the new patch. Uh, kind of just general discussion, so I've, I've put up a few points here uh, that I want to go through. Uh, so I want to go through the patch, the notes uh, themselves, uh, kind of with my thoughts and ideas, both uh, based on just the general matchups and the, the metagame, and also from my own perspective as uh, both an elf and a human player. And then I want to analyze the theme of the patch, like what, what's Blizzard actually telling us with this patch based on the changes they're making. Uh, I want to talk about what's missing from the patch. And then I want to go into uh, people's reactions, mostly uh, Happy's reaction, but also Grubby and some others. Uh, and then uh, going forward, and uh, what does the future uh, hold for Warcraft? Uh, so I'm just going to go, I put all the patch notes in a, a Word file. And we'll just go through them. So I'll start by just going through all the changes and kind of my initial reactions, and then we'll go to the other points. So uh, the resolution and the player support, all this is just great. Having the mana bar display is great. Nothing really to complain about. Although if we've actually tested the PTR, which I have, the uh, the view is very zoomed out, uh, almost way too much in my opinion. It feels kind of like StarCraft 2, uh, which it's difficult to say if it's just like uh, uh, if it's difficult to adjust to, like if it's just if it's uh, bad because it's new, or if it's actually just bad. Like uh, maybe if you played a hundred games with that view, you'd get used to it and you'd think it's better. I don't know, but in my experience, uh, I prefer the one that uh, the zoom out level on Netties, which is a bit more than on uh, standard Warcraft, but not at all as much as the PTR. And also the uh, the health bars and the mana bars don't seem to scale with the zoom so they're really big in the PTR so just initially it's very difficult to play a single game without making a lot of mistakes and misjudgments on you know positions uh, even building placements can be difficult so let's go right to the balance changes here we'll start with the, the human hero balance changes so the mountain king base speed increased 270 to 290 this is a theme for all of the uh, slower heroes in the game they're all going to get buffed by this much which I really like I feel like this change, more than anything else, will make uh, more heroes viable as a first hero. Because basically, if you, if you go for like Mountain King first or Panda first, there's like a, a boost of speed tax on that hero. Like you have to get the boots uh, if you want it to be viable. And you probably still want to, but at least for the early parts of the game, you'll be a bit more uh, flexible. Uh, so Stormbolt gets reduced uh, from damage wise from 225 to 210 on level 2 and 350 to 325 on level 3. Which doesn't sound that significant, but uh, what it does mean is that you can't one-shot Acolytes, for example, with a level 2 bolt, which really helps the uh, human versus undead matchup uh, to make sure that there aren't these kind of unwinnable or uncounterable situations where he just goes in and throws a bolt and you can't do anything. With this, you can always kind of react maybe with a Zeppelin or a Coil or whatever. So I like that change. It's not going to affect like everyday battles, but it will affect the harass potential. Uh, so Thunderclap is also getting a buff, uh, increasing the damage and the range. I'm not really sure how I feel about this. It's good for the matchup against Orc because it, it gives human more of uh, a stronger late game, more or less, uh, which is good, but if, if I'm thinking as an idol player, especially if you haven't gone Demon Hunter, if you've gone for a Tavern Hero, uh, then the, the chance of your opponent going Mountain King second is pretty big, and buffing Clap in that situation just is not going to be fun uh, if you're an idol player with, with a Tavern Hero. Like if you go Beastmaster Nog or something like that, then uh, Blizzard Clap is going to be very, very difficult to deal with. It already is, so not really sure how I feel about it. Uh, but whenever I do play Human myself with Mountain King, I almost always get Clap instead of Bash, so this is even more reason to do so. Paladin gets a base uh, speed increase in its attack, uh, and movement speed like like every other 270 to 290, same with the Mountain King, uh, but also the attack speed. Not really sure why, but that's fine. Uh, Divine Shield getting nerfed, it's perfect, it's always been overpowered, it's uh, lasted way too long, especially level 3 is just insane, but so I think it's uh, not too big of a change, but it's it's fine, it makes uh, Paladin a little less uh, abusable against Undead, for example, but also just in general battles where uh, the human has three heroes and 
if you count, if you attack uh, the Archmage or the Mountain King, then it's going to get holy lighted, and if you attack the Paladin, it's just going to use Divine Shield, and it's going to last, you know, 30 seconds. It's just, it's quite big. And so we're going to the Orcs. We have the biggest change here, which is the Blade Master. I think everyone for a long time has wanted to uh, nerf the Blade Master somehow, and uh, Blizzard has gone through with I think the most commonly suggested uh, change, which is just to remove the plus damage item interaction from multiplier calculations. So if you have a bunch of uh, claws and stuff, it's not going to affect the critical strike. I think it's a great change because it kind of removes the extreme end of the Blade Master. And when when we go down to Night Elf, we're going to see the same thing with Warden and the Blink nerf. Like, it's not going to affect the early game. It's not really going to affect the mid game. It's not going to have too much of an effect. It's just going to make sure that those outlying games where you have like plus 50 damage on your Blade Master, it's just unwinnable when you get level 3 or 2 crits with those items. So it just removes the extreme end. I think that's a great change. Uh, however, I think it's kind of alarming that they would reduce the damage. Essentially, this is reducing the damage of the Blade Master, but you're not buffing the units. So whenever I thought about this change, I always assumed it would be like, okay, let's nerf the damage output on the Blade Master, but let's increase the damage of the actual units, because that's like my big complaint with the orc race is that all the damage is in the blade master, like grunts, headhunters, walkers, raiders, like they just don't do a lot of damage in and of themselves. So I would have coupled this with an increase in maybe grunt damage or headhunter damage. But yeah, I think that's a great change to start with. Uh, doesn't really address the windwalk, which I think I think level two windwalk is still a big issue in the game, especially with most maps being quite small. Level 2 Windwalk is just way too intrusive. But it's a good start. Now the Mirror Image change, I don't understand at all. There are a couple of changes, I'd say like 3 or 4 changes in this patch that just make no sense to me, and this is one of them. This just it doesn't affect anything. Uh, mirror Image is not a good spell, so reducing it by 10 mana is not going to... You're never going to pick Mirror Image over Critical Strike and Windwalk. I would say, even if you make Windwalk free, like if, if Windwalk costs 0 mana, you'd still never pick it over Windwalk and Critical Strike, so... You either have to change how the actual spell works by maybe making it so that it does damage or something. Uh, this change just didn't... It feels like one of the old... If you look at the older patches, there were certain changes that just felt kind of random, like buffing rifle and HP. It feels like one of those changes where it's like, okay, let's just... We'll make Windwalk... Uh, we'll make Mirror Image a bit cheaper for some reason. Gotta change it somehow. So I think that's a big, big miss by them, by Blizzard's part. I would like to see it be free. Just start with that. Make Mirror Image to cost zero mana. See what happens. Uh, now the Farseer gets quite a big buff. I like that. It's obvious that they're kind of making... They want to tone down the Blade Master and they want to lift up the, the Farseer to make it... Uh, just give Orc more uh, versatility in their first hero pick. So they lower the XP rewarded for Wolves and they increase the stats. So the most significant is level 1 wolf goes from 200 to 250, so you can't just dispel it with one wisp as an idle pair. Uh, but also, th the combination of more HP and less XP uh, just makes wolves better. Like, sometimes in the current game, wolves are just a liability, like they're walking tomes of experience for your opponent. The first thing they'll do is target down the wolves, and you have to micro them really well. So level 1 wolves always did seem a bit weak, so I like this change a lot. The chain lightning change is also good because it kind of addresses that damage question where if you reduce the blade master damage, you have to increase the other damage of the army somehow. And this is one way to make chain lightning a bit better. And if you've actually experienced this uh, on the patch, uh, on the PTR realm, then uh, it might not look like much on paper to go from 0.15 uh, to 0.10, but it does actually feel, you can feel it quite a bit. Like if you have militia or ghouls or something, you're going to feel that change. The far side chains, I like this. This is what I suggested with Mirror Image, and it's kind of the same thing here. Even even if uh, far side costs no mana, you're still not going to pick the spell. I guarantee you, you're never going to see far side outside of like team games and free for all. Uh, you're not going to pick this at level one or two or three, and so on. It's always going to be your last pick when you're level seven, which is a shame. Uh, but that's just kind of how. Uh, how the spell works. Like, it's not good in a fight, it's not good in the early game, uh, especially level 1. Like, doesn't a peon scout achieves the same thing, so why are you going to reduce your uh, your hero's strength by not getting a, a wolf or not getting lightning? 
But I still I like the idea because the fact that it doesn't cost mana will attract people to maybe try it somehow. Especially if you're going for some kind of like Raider Lame or something like that. You're going for uh, hit and run tactics. It could be really strong to have these uh, free Farsights. But the cooldown does increase, of course, so uh, you still have to use them wisely. Tron Chieftain, uh, as the other heroes get increased speed, and they increase the War Stomp damage. Uh, another one of those, I don't really understand why. They don't address the stun issue. Like, the stun is what makes it strong, getting 5 extra damage. I don't really see, uh, it doesn't affect the game that much, in my opinion. Uh, but again, it adds a bit more damage to the Orc army once they nerf the Blade Master damage, so it makes sense. Uh, Reincarnation gets a small buff. Doesn't really matter, I don't think. So the Undead, I think these are the most interesting. Uh, Dreadlord, base speed increases all the others. And then the Carrion Swarm, I love this change. Uh, reducing the mana cost from 100. Uh, 10 to 100, and then uh, making it so that it can cast a target mechanical units, and specifically units, not buildings. So this kind of makes undead players have to pick and like both the the carrion, both the dreadlord and the pandaren and brewmaster are going to have their co pros and cons. So I like this change a lot. It doesn't make it so it's like an auto pick to get dreadlord over panda. You kind of have to choose based on the situation. But carrion swarm, one of those spells that for a long time has needed a buff. It's always been weaker than the other uh, area effect spells. And this way you can handle tanks a bit easier, uh, flying machines and all that, but uh, because it's still capped, I believe it's 6 units or 8 units, uh, it's not going to be as good as Breath of Fire against Mass Gyros, for example. Uh, sleep. Uh, the duration doesn't really matter. You're always just going to attack your own unit to wake it up, so that really doesn't matter. Uh, but the mana duration is a big thing. Going from 100 to 80 on level 1 is huge. And then uh, level 2 and 3 doesn't matter as much because you're going to have more mana at that point and statues and stuff. But the level 1 I think is huge. Especially if you're playing against maybe Night Elf or Demon Hunter. Uh, in the normal game with 100 mana, you're going to get fewer surround chances against mana burn. Uh, but it also does uh, mean that you could potentially go sleep and carry and swarm. Like, you don't have to go for aura uh, since both of the spells get their mana reduced. So the Vampire Guard change, uh, it says that it increases the bonus for the Dreadlord, but if you actually go on the PTR, it, it seems to affect all units. So the aura has been buffed, not just for the hero itself, but for all units. So it's 20, 35, 50. And I really don't understand this. This is a point of frustration for me, is that they buffed Vampiric Aura, but they don't buff Thorn's Aura. And Thorn's Aura has always been worse than Vampiric Aura. So I, I don't understand this change, why they would... Uh, buff that aura and not the thorns aura, but we're going to get into uh, in, a, in the other points uh, kind of what Blizzard is trying to do. So I think th I think there's a reason for this, uh, I don't really agree with it, but we'll we'll get to that. Crypt Lord also gets the uh, increase in speed, and the Carrion Beetles uh, get equal speed so, that, so they don't lag behind the hero, makes sense. Uh, and then a, a small increase in HP, which I really like this as well because uh, maybe we'll see some fast expansions from Undead. Maybe we'll see Beetle expansions. Maybe we'll see Sleep expansions. Just give Undead more uh, versatility in their early game. Uh, and especially since they don't address the Death Knight Ultimate, which has always been really, really bad. This is kind of a way to address it by maybe making Crypt Lord or Dreadlord more viable as a first hero, so you have a bigger chance of getting a good ultimate. So I like this Beetle change and the Impale change. Impale has always been kind of weak. Uh, the stun doesn't last long, damage has been weak, so just adding a bit more damage makes it. Uh, maybe we'll see it outside of the rifle caster armies, uh, but still probably not. But again, maybe as a first hero. And then the list just gets the increase to movement speed like all the others. Uh, so here comes uh, the race I'm currently playing the most, a Night Elf. And here's another one of those, uh, the mirror image buff and this buff just make no sense to me. So the Priestess gets uh, attack reduced attack speed or increased from 2.46 to 2.33. Uh, it just doesn't make sense because for one, the uh, attack still is very high. Like, uh, 
I think a Blade Master's 180 or something like that. Uh, but the the biggest issue isn't that she attacks slowly; it's that her arrow, uh, searing arrows, is just a bad spell. So even if you attack faster, searing arrow still costs. Uh, I believe it's eight mana. Just kind of double check that. Yeah, so eight mana at level one, you're getting ten bonus damage. It's by far the worst arrow effect, I would say. Uh, which makes sense uh, if you if you look at like the timeline of the game. Back in Reno Chaos, this was the only arrow effect in the game, uh, searing arrows. And then in the Frozen Throne, they want to add two new arrows, and they want to make them, you know, cool and, and uh, viable, so they they just make them better than searing arrows. So, if you compare searing arrows with uh, frost arrows, it's a frost arrow costs two more mana, but at level three, you get 15 bonus damage, and a 70% attack rate and 70% movement speed decrease in whatever you're targeting. So it's like, do you want plus 15 damage, or do you want to reduce the attack and movement speed by 70%? It's obviously a much better arrow. Same thing with Dark Arrow, uh, or Black Arrow as it's called. It's uh, 6 mana, so it's, it costs less mana than Searing Arrows, but level 3 it does 20 bonus damage, and you get a huge skeleton. So it's like, okay, do you want plus 10 damage, or do you want a huge skeleton? Like, Searing Arrows is so weak, so this change is never, it's not going to affect the game. Priestess is still terrible, and I love the Priestess. I played a lot of Priestess in my day. Uh, but Searing Arrow and Attack Speed has always been an issue. I would honestly reduce the cost of Searing Arrow to 5 mana, or increase it to be uh, 20, 40, 60, something like that. Like, maybe that's too much, but just make it more viable. Because the way it is now, you're never going to pick Priestess over Demon Hunter uh, in a normal game. Unless you just really like the hero, like I do. And they don't address her aura at all, which is kind of sad. Or the Owl Scout, because I think Owl Scout is kind of like Farsight, where it gets a lot better when you level it up, but level 1 is so bad that it's just not worth it. Keeper of the Grove, another one of my favorite heroes. Gets a buff in Intelligence for some reason. Not really sure why. Uh, and the Ultimate has been buffed, so that it has a 3 second vulnerability, invulnerability to the start of the cast. And the uh, duration has been cut in half, and the heal per second has doubled, so it's just a better ultimate. Makes it more viable to use in battle, but I always thought like the strength of Tranquility was that you didn't have to use it in battle, like you can just use it after a battle or before a battle. So I don't really know why they, they buffed the ultimate. Uh, one reason can be that uh, it's a way of making him like, if you pick Keeper first, then he quite quickly becomes a useless hero. As soon as there's Dispel, then he's just a, a walking archer pretty much. So this can be one way of making him a bit more attractive by actually, once you get level 6, he's more impactful in a fight. So I, I think it's a good change. Why not? Uh, the Entang Entangled Roots change, it's another one that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, so you, you de de decrease the time that it lasts, but you increase the damage. Uh, but it only affects level 2 and level 3, which... I mean, by the time you have level 2 or level 3 in Tanyan Roots, your opponent's pretty much always going to have Dispel, so it doesn't really change anything, like, unless you're up against someone who's, you know, massing Raiders or something, it's not really going to change a whole lot. But it will make maybe 2 or 2 games, it'll be a stronger hero. Uh, but again, I don't think this really changes anything. And here's the third of, of those really random changes. So, the Mirror Image the Priestess change, and then the Treants get 14 damage to 16 damage. I don't know why. Treants, uh, by far the worst summon in the game. It really needs a much bigger buff than this to make it viable to go Force of Nature. Uh, it's 125. It costs as much as a Water Mental, but level 1 you get 2 Treants, and level 2 you get 3 Treants. It's just so bad. Uh, so if you want to make Force of Nature uh, stronger, I wouldn't add damage. I would add... Uh, add trees, like I would, level 1 should maybe get 3 treants, and level 2 should get 4, and level 3 should get 5. Something like that. This change, not going to affect the game at all. Here's a great change though, the blink change in Warden, it uh, reduces the increase cooldown for level 2 and 3. Reduce and increase the cooldown for level 2 and 3, so... Uh, level 2 gets, uh, better level 3 gets worse, and this is kind of the same as the Wade Master change, you reduce the extreme end of the hero, like a warden, like a level 7 warden, level 6 warden is just incredibly abusable. And it kind of ruins the game in a lot of ways, because if you're playing against warden, you always know in the back of your head that 
you have to avoid this like one second blink abuse. So you have to end the game fast. So you have to do something weird. And this is kind of a way to make make it so you don't have to always think about not getting to this stage just by removing the, the potency. So it doesn't change your strength in fights. It doesn't change your strength in the early game. It just kind of removes that extreme end. So I like that change a lot. So interestingly here, we don't see a change in the Demon Hunter, which I know Grubby mentioned in his video. Like, why would you nerf the Blade Master if you don't nerf the Demon Hunter? Uh, and I kind of agree on one level. Like, the Demon Hunter is a very intrusive hero, and he's he is too strong. Like, he's too efficient, I would say. Like, a lot of Night Elf strategy revolves around your Moonwill usage, and Demon Hunter is just by far the most efficient Moonwill user. So I would have liked to see a nerf to him some way. Uh, one of the best changes, I would say, is just increase the mana cost of mana burn along with the levels. So maybe the cost goes from 50 to 75 to 100, something like that. Uh, so surprised that they didn't touch him at all. Uh, let's go to the neutral healers here. So Naga and Pandren also get the uh, speed increase as uh, all the others. Same with the Tinker, and Tinker gets better cluster rockets. Uh, Increases damage and allow targeting air units, which I thought it already could. I mean, maybe I've just never seen that spell enough. I thought I thought it could attack air units, but I guess it couldn't. Uh, so it just does more damage. Like the the uh, actual stun has always been a joke. Like you can barely see it. If you blink, you miss it. So I guess giving it more damage. It's still one of those changes where it's not doing enough. You're not buffing it enough that you'll ever see this used, I don't think. It's always going to be a pocket factory and, and engineering. So here's probably the biggest change, I would say. The Goblin Alchemist also gets a speed increase, of course. And here's the biggest one. Healing Spray no longer heals enemy units. This is so big. Like, this is insane, if you think about it, because you're essentially creating like a neutral Chad Hunter, I would say. You're giving everyone a way to, to get uh, AOE healing. I like it. I like the idea a lot. It might be too strong. Like Alchemist, I think is already a strong hero. I think he's way underused. But with this change, he's just incredible. If you look at uh, Healing Spray as a spell, uh, level 2 Healing Spray is pretty much like a level 1 Holy Light on everything in the area effect, which is huge. And the reason I really like this change is that... Uh, from an idle perspective at least, you have no way of healing yourself without rejuvenation or moon wells. So if you're playing a strategy like you know, Archers, Hunters, Dryad, Talon, something like a mixed army that doesn't involve bears, you very often come to a point where you just don't have any healing and you have to like buy heal scrolls or you have to somehow use a lot of resources to heal your, your army. And this could be a way to create just a way to heal your, your units as an idol. Uh, especially the fact that it's AoE is very nice. So I like the idea. I think it can create diverse strategies where you don't have to rely on rejuvenation. You don't have to rely on Demon Hunter efficiency. Because maybe you can rely on Healing Spray. I think it's great. Probably too strong, but we'll see. Same thing with Acid Bomb. Acid Bomb is already a great spell. I don't know why they had to add the increase the DPS. I think it just might be one of those issues where Alchemist is underused, so you think he's weak, and so you buff him. But the reality is that he's always been strong. He's just been underused for some other reason. Like, I've always thought that uh, Alchemist is a great hero. So I'm very uh, interested in trying some Alchemist strategies. Especially like Keeper Alchemist I think will be great. Fire Lord gets a buff in Incinerate and Soul Burn. Uh, Incinerate is one of those spells you almost never see and I don't think most people even know how it works. Uh, but the damage multiplier from 1 to 2 and the air effect of the splash uh, is increased with the full damage and the half, the, f the full area and half area of the damage. So the explosion that comes from the corpse will, will do more damage to more units. Uh, I don't know if this is going to change a whole lot. It still costs mana. Back in the day, Incinerate didn't cost mana, so it was great to combine Lava Spawn with Incinerate. As it is, I don't think you'd rather use your mana on Incinerate than Lava Spawns. So I don't really think it's going to be used that much. Plus, the Fire Lord's already quite a weak hero, so it's difficult to just target something over and over with the Fire Lord. He's usually running around and not trying to avoid damage, so to speak. So the same thing here with Soulburn. Or not the same thing, because Soulburn is actually what you're almost always going to get. You're going to go Lava Spawn and Soulburn. So buffing it 
makes sense, makes them a bit stronger. Uh, I'm not really sure why they buffed him though. Like, uh, now that we're getting to the, the last heroes here, I can get into my next point, which is like, why why are certain heroes buffed and why are others not? So we have the uh, Soul Bird increase and then the Dark Ranger life drain, which I'd say is probably my fourth uh, change that doesn't make sense. Uh, like, reducing the mana cost and increasing damage is just not going to, like, when are you ever going to use life drain? You don't pick Dark Ranger for life drain. There are some fringe situations, maybe if you're going Priestess, Dark Ranger, Mass Fairies, for example, you don't really need Silence, perhaps, and you go Mana Drain. Uh, but yeah, like, seems like an, just an unnecessary change, or at least one that isn't based on anything, really. Just like a random change. Uh, so the map pool, I'm not going to go through all of them, but when I look through these, I got a lot of nostalgia of like the 3 versus 3 maps and the 4 versus 4 maps. There are a lot of good maps coming back. Uh, so I think a lot of the uh, team game players are going to be very happy, especially the free-for-all maps are very nice. The one versus one pool I like a lot. I personally like the idea of like remaking old maps, making them more balanced, like Plunder Isles, uh, Two Rivers. I have a lot of good memories of those maps, but they're not balanced at all. Uh, I would say that the the Two Rivers latter version is still kind of a bad map, but the idea is good. I, love, I like the idea of bringing back these classic maps and just kind of... Uh, adapting them to the modern game. Uh, so I have happy thoughts here, but before we get into that, uh, I want to go back to uh, the theme of the patch. Like, what does Blizzard want? What is he, what's Blizzard telling us with this patch? Uh, and if we look at the changes, it's quite obvious to me that they want more heroes to be viable as a first hero, uh, and they want certain heroes to be stronger. So the question I have is why are certain heroes more worthy of being first heroes than others? Like, why are certain heroes uh, worthy to be buffed and others aren't? So a prime example would be like Pitlord. Pitlord didn't get changed. Why didn't Pitlord get changed? Why did Dreadlord get a uh, buff to the aura? Why did Keeper not get a buff to his aura? Like, what's the uh, thought process behind these changes? And... Uh, there is a quote, like at the very top of the the patch uh, forum post, the, the guy who posted it said that this is a start. We have larger ideas in the works long term, but we're taking the approach of small changes so we can measure and iterate uh, without causing massive changes in the meta. So a part of the explanation can be that this is just a small start, and maybe they will buff all the other heroes at some point. Maybe they will buff all the other units. We'll see. Uh, but my general question would be, like, who decides which heroes are worthy of being... Like, why is Dreadlord supposed to be a good first hero? Like, does Blizzard want heroes to be uh, differentiated? Should we have first heroes and second heroes and third heroes? Should every hero be viable as a first hero? It's uh, an interesting question. I would say that I'm fine with the idea of having, like, starter heroes and secondary heroes. Like, heroes that are just better uh, at certain points in the game. And I think, the, like, the best example of that is the Keeper of the Grove. Uh, which is why I like Keeper of the Grove so much, is he's so un unique that he's so strong early on, but he's so weak late game. Like, So they have, like the strategy around him is to get enough of an advantage early game when he's strong, so that he can compensate for his weakness in the late game. But the problem with that is that you still have a lot of heroes that are good at every part of the game. So if you look at Demon Hunter, uh, Blade Master, Farseer, like, a lot of these heroes are strong at every part of the game. Level 1 Demon Hunter is great. Level 2 Demon Hunter is great. Level 3 Demon Hunter is great. Uh, Mana Burn doesn't have a counter. Metamorphosis doesn't have a counter. But Entangling Roots does. Force Nature does. So, like the question is, uh, do we want the, the the Keeper of the Grove to always be strong? Do, is it fine that he's like a unique hero in that aspect? Uh, should every hero uh, be like the Demon Hunter or the Blade Master? Like this? Should they always be viable all game? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's fine to have certain heroes that are strong early but then fall off. But, like I said, the problem then is that there are heroes that are always good. So, why would I go Keeper of the Grove when I can go Demon Hunter? Because Demon Hunter is always strong. He's never going to become countered. Uh, same thing with a lot of these heroes. Why would I not go Blade Master still? He's still... Uh, there's no counter to Blade Master. He doesn't fall off at any point. So, if you want to create that kind of game you'd really have to look over 
the standard heroes like Archmage, Death Knight, uh, Blade Master, Demon Hunter, make them uh, like other heroes in the fact that they would have like weaknesses at some point in the game. Like you're either strong early and then you're weak late, or you're weak early but you're strong late, and so on. That's just a, a thought I had about like the reasoning uh, behind the patch. Like what what does Blizzard telling us with this patch? So if we go on to what's missing, I've already talked a lot about it, uh, but the most standout thing for me is that there are no unit changes. And again, it might just be that this is part of the the quote that I read that they're they're moving slowly. They're just making small changes, so they're starting with the heroes. But I'd love to see unit changes as well. Uh, seeing underused units utilized would be a lot of fun, like mountain giants, undead casters, well, specifically necromancers, because banshees are used quite a bit. Uh, so those are some, some some things I'd really like to see. Um, I'd also see like to see some system changes, like the interface changes, specifically uh, auto cast. I think every spell except healing should be turned off from the start. So if you train a druid or talon, uh, if you train a sorceress, it it won't have its slow and fairy fire spells uh, on auto cast by default. It's just kind of an annoying thing to deal with that doesn't have to be like that. So if you have a full control group of, or if you have a group of talons, and they have uh, auto cast turned off, and then you add a talon with auto cast on, the full group will still look like it has uh, auto cast turned off. So you always have to manually like turn off and on auto cast to make sure it's not on for all for other units. It's just a hassle. I think that's the change it should make. Uh, just rework the auto cast system. Uh, and the last thing I would like to see is the gargoyle uh, AI improved. Uh, it's kind of like a, a fringe change, it doesn't really affect a lot, but I would like Gargoyles to auto-attack air, like they should prioritize air units, their air attack, uh, instead of ground attacks. So like, in the current game, if you attack move a bunch of uh, Dryads and Hippogriffs into Gargoyles, and the Gargoyles attack move into your Dryads and Hippogriffs, then you're going to get slaughtered, because you're probably going to get a lot of ground attacks on those Dryads, instead of focusing on the, the main uh, DPS, which is the air attack. So those are some things I think are missing. Uh, I wrote down a few things. I want to just double check in case I missed something. Well, yeah, the one thing I haven't talked about is the worm, the frost worm. I'd like to see, uh, if we're going to change units, I'd like to see the frost effect nerfed. Because right now it lasts so long and it's like a splash and it's just... Specifically for the Undead versus Nidal matchup, it really makes the worm just way too cost efficient. I think it's a problem, uh, but the the meta game, I guess, does need time to to adapt and evolve before we uh, make any claims about that. But I'd like to see the frost worm addressed. But yeah, so let's go to people's reactions. And Grubby mentioned that the Blade Master got nerfed, but the Demon Hunter didn't. And like I said, I agree with him. Uh, in part, but I don't think that nerfing the Blade Master makes the matchup imbalanced. Because if you look at the stats, like the pro stats, it's an orc favored matchup and has been for a long time. Like, Mass Talents just isn't. It's not a strong strategy. You put a lot of uh, emphasis on what the orc does or doesn't do. Like, basically, as a Night Elf, if you're going Mass Talents, from the start of the game, it's just like a ticking clock. Like you just have to get to a point where you have master talents, and until you have master talents, you you can't do anything. Like you don't have any map control, you don't have any options really. You just got to get to that cyclone, and then you can start playing the game. So in like modern Warcraft three, like modern orcs are so good at utilizing that time window, they're always going to have like three three heroes and scrolls and items. They're going to like get so much done in that time window. So I don't think nerfing the blade master really makes it. Uh, Nidal favored because it's already orc favored. And I think it's still going to be, uh, but it, it, it is. <coughs> sorry, it is interesting to see the the farseer change might affect the matchup. Maybe we'd see like chain wave against talons. That'd be cool. Uh, and also the fact that the critical strike has changed so that the extreme end of the blade master is gone means that we might be able to see some lore tech more often, like mass dryad, spare dryad. So we might see some versatility uh, just by the fact that the blade master. Uh, doesn't become that extreme DPS source that he has been, uh, and if especially if we see like Farseer uh, used a lot more, we might see Dryads for abolish and stuff like that. <coughs> Excuse me.
excuse me. So, the other reaction is Happy's reaction. I mean, uh, excuse me. <coughs> I'm a bit sick. So I probably shouldn't be talking, but I had to make this video. Uh, so Happy's reaction is kind of a meme. Like, anyone who's read uh, Happy's suggestions, I've kind of laughed about it, and just because they're so extreme. And it seems like he's not really very self-aware, but here's his, I actually copy-pasted his tweet into my Word document here. Uh, so I just want to go through his thoughts and, and give some comments. So he says, the Dreadlord Swarm change is good, but still outmatched by Panda's Breath of Fire because Swarm has limitations of number of targets and maximum damage. Also can't hit buildings. And that's kind of where I think you missed the point. I think it's such a nice, subtle change because it actually makes you have to choose between the heroes based on the situation. Uh, I know Happy is the type of player who wants to have like the one strategy. He wants to be able to always do the same thing, but the fact that the Dreadlord and the Panda, it's kind of like a Venn diagram where they have certain things overlapping, like they can both target mechanical units, but they're better at some things and worse at others. You, you just have to make a choice based on the situation. I think that's a great change. So I think Happy complaining about it is just him misunderstanding the intention of Blizzard, I think. So the Blade Master should be nerfed more. I think Critical Strike Damage Multiplier should be time is 1.75 to 2.25 to 3 instead of 234. Also, any bonus damage should be added after this calculation. So that's what has already been changed, but he wants to nerf the actual Critical Strike. And if you do that, like <laughs> like I said before, the, like, the Blade Master is the damage output. So if you're nerfing Critical Strike this much, you're nerfing the damage output of the Orc Army by so much. Uh, and especially in a matchup like, I mean, Happy's talking about Undead vs. Orc specifically with his tweet here. He's only talking about the Undead vs. Orc matchup, and that's a matchup that relies so much on just DPS, raw DPS. It's the critical strike and the hex and the heal wave versus like the, the raw nuking power of Undead with Orb right clicks. So if you nerf the critical strike, but you don't change anything with the Undead, it's just going to slope the matchup into the Undead favor, I think. And it's a matchup that's more and more becoming quite balanced, so. It seems like a very extreme change. Uh, regarding a huge problem with base trade, mass raider, mass towers, base exchange, etc. This is related to all matchups, but mostly affects only undead. Fortified defenses upgrade should be removed. It will not affect any other matchups. Well, that's not really true. Uh, it will give undead an option to punish orc. Right now, there's simply no option because every even big undead armies would take a lot of time to destroy even a few fortified boroughs. And what I will say about Happy's tweet is that there's a lot of like truth hidden in the text. Like I agree with a lot of this. I think it is a problem with uh, fortified defenses and with raiders and speed scrolls. Like Orc has a lot of options to just lame you, hit and run you, and like Happy says, like a lot of the time your only option is to play defensive. You can never make that choice of like, okay, let's go for base trade, let's punish him, let's attack him, because if you do, you're just going to lose. You're going to lose to siege damage raiders, pillage, and fortified burrows and towers in their base that are just never going to die. This is true for orcs, this is true for humans, this is true for Nidalf. Like, you just never have a... If you're playing an orc who's playing this style, you don't really have a lot of options. So I agree, like, maybe not removing fortified defenses, but nerfing it for sure. Uh, or just buffing. You could remove it and then buff burrows or something like that. And uh, I think the same thing goes for siege tanks, which I think you'll get into here. Uh, it's just such a... Like, siege tanks and fortified defenses and, like, liquid fire bats... Uh, it's not really fun in interactive gameplay. It limits what your opponent can do a lot of the time. Like a lot of the time, you can just play defensive because there's just nothing you can do, uh, and it becomes a super, super dragged out game. And it's fine to play defensive, but you should be able to have options. I think so. I agree. Uh, it is a problem and it should be addressed. So to compensate, spike barricade upgrade should give a plus 50 to 75 HP to buildings for each upgrade. It doesn't really make sense. Like the the issue isn't the HP; it's the armor type, so heavy armor burrows is a problem. And orc players will know this, like, pretty much every matchup if you're playing orc, you're always going to get your burrows right click. That's like just part of the matchup. That's part of the metagame to abuse the fact that burrows are so bad. So, you know, Archmage Beastmaster, uh, Demon Hunter Beastmaster, Destroyers, everything just destroy burrows. So you can't just buff a bit of HP. Like, it's an issue. I think you should maybe just make Burrows fortified from the start, or something like that, but maybe re reduce their armor. It's hard. It's hard to say because uh, 
if you do that, then there's no early game potential harass. And maybe like burrow rush could be too strong. Like there's a lot of issues uh, with uh, changing burrows. But I agree, it's a problem. Sappers. There are two options: make them immune to speed scroll slash any aura that gives speed, or add plus 50 to 100 HP to Ziggurat, so they won't be getting destroyed with a single sapper. I think that's valid criticism. Speed scroll sappers shouldn't be a thing. You can't put sappers in Zeppelin, so why should you be able to speed scroll them? It's kind of the same effect. Uh, buffing Ziggurats. Again, I think that makes sense because you just nerfed Stormbolt, so they couldn't one-shot acolytes. So maybe you should nerf. Uh, or buff cigarettes so they don't get one-shotted by sappers. Uh, I think it's it's a valid uh, valid suggestion. Tanks should be so for supply a bit more expensive than lumber. Make it so that any ranged attack on tanks would be projectile, which means any siege units usually attack ground. For tanks, it should always be hitting the tank. Okay, so I think he means that you always get full damage if you attack a tank with a siege unit. Uh, well, I mean. Tanks already are kind of getting less and less used, so if you make tanks for supply and more expensive and make siege kill them easier, no one's going to make tanks. And this is kind of a theme for a lot of happy suggestions, is that he's making these extreme suggestions. And in, like Warcraft is a very delicate game, I would say. It's very old, it has a very established meta, so even making a, a small change will, can have a huge effect. But here, happy is making like these sweeping suggestions, like, oh, nerf... Uh, Nerf critical strike, remove fortified uh, fortification upgrade, uh, make carrying swarm even better. Like he's making these huge uh, suggestions on top of each other, which I think shows that Happy doesn't really understand like the subtleties of the game. Uh, I mean, he's a great player. He's probably one of the best in the world uh, right now. So I'm not saying he's a bad player. I'm just saying that he's, his understanding seems a bit off. I think it has to do with like a mentality issue, especially like when you ask high level or pro players like sometimes they don't have the best suggestions, and I think the reason is that uh, uh like the mentality of happy is probably i'm I'm not sure I don't know happy i'm not I'm not in his brain or anything, but I think when happy loses a game, it's because of imbalance, and when happy wins a game, he overcame the imbalance. And if you have that mentality, it's very easy to make these huge sweeping suggestions because you're always thinking that you're overcoming the imbalance or losing to imbalance. So there's a huge imbalance issue, uh, and you're never considering the fact that maybe your race is strong in certain aspects. Maybe you won because of imbalance. Uh, and if you have that mentality, it's very easy to make these kind of ridiculous change uh, suggestions. Um, but let's move on. With that being said, uh, the, the most uh, fun suggestion... Uh, is what follows here. Undead main should be reworked. Ideally, an Acropolis should work the same way as Tree of Life, except having an ability to uproot and move. Gold mine would need to be haunted. Acolytes would be projected inside, and repairs will be free. So he basically wants a entangled gold mine for undead. And it's like, okay, so what? What's the reason for ever attacking the undead base? Like undead base is already like off limits to most players for the biggest part of the game. You never want to attack an undead base. So if you also put the acolytes inside a protect protected mine, you're just never going to attack the undead base. There's no reason. It's just suicide. So I think that's kind of a silly suggestion. I think you could maybe buff acolyte HP. Maybe you can make them take 50% damage from spells when they're on the gold mine. Something like that. You can definitely do something. Like like I said, there's a lot of truth hidden underneath what Happy is saying. He's just giving such extreme suggestions that you kind of have to laugh about it. But there is an issue with, with undead being so harassable. But I don't think this is the way to, to solve it. Regarding Fountain of Life, either they should be removed from all maps or regeneration should not be percent based, but rather have fixed amounts. I agree. Fountain of Health, Fountain of Mana, they're both just stupid. No map is ever balanced if there's a fountain on it. Secret Valley, Null Wood, Lost Temple, it's just you shouldn't have fountains or you should rework, rework them. I agree with that. Regarding items, some items, Lightning Shield, Book of the Dead, should be removed altogether, or they should be placed in the hardest creep spots on the map as secondary drop. I agree with that, too. Lightning Shield should never be in the game. It's just too... Uh, the variable is too big. Like It's either going to like end the game against human, or it's going to be useless against Night Elf. Like, it's just a stupid item. You shouldn't be, in, shouldn't be in the game. Kind of the same with Book of the Dead. Like, one Wisp could kill all the skeletons, or the Orc loses all his burrows. Like, it's such a such a big variance in that item. Finally, Wardrum's items should provide Kodo Aura. 
rather than command aura because of that orcs are the only race that can benefit from both auras that are not supposed to be stacking. Well, that's fine too. I agree with that. So a lot of kind of silly extreme changes but still a lot of truth hidden underneath. So I wouldn't judge Happy too hard uh, on what he said. Just uh, he's, He seems to be a bit unaware. Uh, and his mentality might just not be the, the best to make balanced suggestions. So yeah, I think that's everything. My last one here is going forward, and uh, it's kind of just my ideas about future patches or the future of the game, which, uh, like I said before, the biggest issue here is that we haven't addressed any unit changes. I'd love to see changes to units. Um, I'd like to see Huntresses get a different armor type so that you can actually make a mixed Knight of Army. Because right now, like if you go... Uh, Huntress, Tal, and Dryad, they're all unarmored and you die to siege. It's just stupid. So I think if you want Night Elves to do something other than just mass bears, you should definitely address either the Huntress and or the Mountain Giant. Because Mountain Giant's kind of the same thing. Uh, he's just bad. You're not going to want to make Mountain Giants instead of bears. Unless you're playing against Mass Talons or something like that. Uh, so I would love to see unit changes. Uh, same with like Necromancer. Uh, Dragon Hawks, like there are a lot of units I think could use some buffs and changes just to make them more interesting. Tauren, you never see Tauren, and that's just kind of a shame because Tauren are really cool, uh, but they're just not viable. Uh, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed my thoughts. Uh, Might have been a bit rambly, maybe a bit too long, but uh, I just had to make a video about it, and. Uh, Post in the comments what you think, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.